Welcome to the Wayward Widow. I'm actually going to do a real video. Um, I've been showing you guys little clips, little one minute clips. Um, last night I took some ashes down to the lake and put them in the lake um, since it was the first day of autumn. And that was one of Sky. Like Sky just loved this seasonal change. Look at the coffee cup. He loved the seasonal change. And so I took some ashes down and put them in the lake. And it just so happened that the geese were decided to give me a bath show. Mm. That's pretty good. I have cafe mocha and I have French vanilla and I have the generic Cool Whip. That's really good. No microphone. I um I still have not gotten my new phone. I'm almost kind of giving up. I'm almost giving up on myself with the new phone, the whole new phone thing. Um, I okay. What's new? Okay, first things first. I finished this guy. This is a twenty by twenty. So he or she is all done. I guess it's she because she's got a little flower in her in her head. All done and I'm working on this one now uh, let's see this is a big one let's let me back up like this it's a big one this is a 40 by 40 and I've done one two three four colors so far I just did the these this mauve plum color all of that like the outline yeah, so that'll take about a week or more, depending on if I work on it every day. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to go over, I, I, I'm like, do I call him my boyfriend? What do you, what do you call someone when they're like, when you're in the 60s? My boyfriend, my man friend, my guy friend. Um, we're going to go over to where he takes um, art lessons and see the paintings in the studio is where we're going to go this afternoon. And then tomorrow, he has a full schedule. So he will not be here all day tomorrow. So tomorrow um, is going to be clean the stove and oven day here at my house. Um, I'm also going to put my color on my roots. See how much hair grew out since I put my last color on? It's getting there. It's getting there. Um, this morning I cleaned out the refrigerator, wiped everything out. I took the trash out and, um, re-upped my library book because I'm about quarter way through it. Um, I want to talk about Facebook for a minute. I, no matter how hard I try to connect with Facebook, I just can't. So I'm ultimately, I'm going to end up just not shutting down Facebook, but there will be just, there'll just be me, my pro, like some type of profile picture and background. And that's going to be that because I just, I just can't with Facebook. Like as much as I try to put stuff up and you know, what I found about Facebook is there's like six people that will go back and forth with you and the rest don't because there's so many types of social media out there. You can't keep up. You just can't keep up with all these. There's so much. I haven't been on TikTok in like three days. Normally I'd be on TikTok every day for a couple minutes just to kind of catch up with the few people that I follow. But anyway, so if I'm just disappearing from Facebook and and you got an unfriend, it was it's nothing personal. I love you guys. You're all over on Messenger with me. That's that's my go-to point is Messenger because then I can talk to you. I can't talk to anybody on Facebook. I just grab somebody's picture and throw it over on my side. And I've, I've said this so many times about Facebook. I try, I try, I try, I try to be something on like to, to, to like it. And I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I love you guys on Messenger. I just don't, I just don't like Facebook. Nothing to do with anybody, but it's a Facebook thing. Um, 
so I uh, haven't been on Messenger today. I did text a few people though this morning. If I have your phone numbers, I will will always try to text first thing in the morning. And um, and I'm trying. I'll get over to Messenger later on today because I want to get some talk messages out, voice messages out. Again, I'm still cleaning up pictures. I'm cleaning up songs. I'm cleaning up stuff to create more room so that you guys, when you when you voice message me, that I can actually hear the whole thing. If I get a voice message and it's three or five minutes long, I can hear the whole thing. Um, and one of these days I'm going to get my phone. I will. I just, life has been crazy. So what's new here in my life? I'm closing in on seven months since Sky passed away. You guys know the 27th is my seventh month since he has gone into rebirth. Um, I'm in the back bedroom, which was the room my son used. And... Um, he's gone. He left on Friday and, uh, I don't know where he is at this point. Um, he's out there somewhere, but I don't know where he is. I don't have any information on him. So I'm using this room right now because it's private and it's quiet. The man friend is out in the living room doing work on his laptop and so I just thought I would bring you up to speed and kind of tell you what's been happening and how I'm feeling and what's going on with me and all that um life is really weird right now for me I can say that without feeling bad can I put these on without too much glare can we deal with the glare do you think for a minute Ugh, I can't I can't um I've been watching a lot of Ram Dass in the evenings, he and I will um, watch Ram Dass on TV through Gaia and the channel Gaia. And Ram Dass is, was fascinating. It's fascinating to listen to. And he was talking about death the other day and people mourning someone's death. And he said, like, why? Why? Because he was this person, whoever it was, was sick and dying. And he's like, don't don't get all don't mourn don't I'm not going anywhere I'm, my body's just dropping off but I will still always be with you and that just got in my head and stuck with me and that's exactly the way it is with Sky he's like always with me his body just dropped off but he's always with me and that's the way it is with my dad who passed on my mom you know like you don't forget these people their bodies drop off but they're still there in you know one in former one former fashion right so taking some ashes down yesterday i put him in one spot in a lake and then i put a leaf on top of the ashes and i floated it on the water and um i i took a picture of it i have a picture on my phone and i just talked with him for a second you know i said first day of autumn for you and he knows it anyway in his new life um, I miss him a lot. Um, sometimes the memories, his memory is really hard to grab now. Uh, I have to think harder to like remember his voice. That's probably the hardest thing to remember is his voice. And it's easier for me to remember like him eating a meal. It's easier for me to remember him getting dressed because I would help him with his jacket and stuff. It's easier for me to remember him getting out of the car and coming in the apartment and sitting with Moonshadow, our cat. Those things are easier, but his voice, it's harder for me to remember his voice at seven months gone. Um, nothing as far as the household or the bills or anything has changed. Everything's just status quo. I, I'm really, really, really considering texting my car salesman and saying what's on the lot is there anything on the lot if i put a couple hundred down that you can get me something for just under 200 a month i think i'm going to do that um i feel really um uh what's the word like um restricted without having my car even though cars are so darn expensive and not having any expense of a car has been really nice the last three months. However, not having a car 
is not my druthers, you know, I, I really want a car. Um, something used, something good used, you know. But anyway, so that's about the only other thing. October is going to be super busy. I have my uh, psychiatrist appointment through telehealth. I have um, therapy once in October. Uh, we have tickets to go see a show, which I think I mentioned before. And we're going to go down to the shore, down to the ocean at the end of October, which I'm really excited about. I want to get my feet in the sand and uh, make a sand angel. And I'm going to get video. So as we do things as a couple, I will do the little clips like I've been doing. Like he was with me to help me with the altar. He was with me um, last night when I put the ashes in. You know, he stayed with me and let me do my crying and was there for me. Um, so um, when we went to the museum, of course, we went together. So I will I will show bits and pieces of what we do as a couple um, to maybe just like give you guys a feel of what it's like on my end. It's It's been a, a very strange year for me. A lot's happened. There's a lot of emotions. And uh, um, a lot of struggles, a lot of tears. Um, I'm finding contentment to a degree. Um, I'm learning this new person's nuances, you know, what he's all about. We talk a lot. We talk a lot. Um, communication is a big thing for me and him. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to October 1. Um, I'm looking forward to the, ch the ch more change in the trees and I'll keep showing that um, around here in this area. I'm looking forward to Halloween. And I changed the, like I said, I changed the sign on the door. I'll have to show you the new sign. Um, it says welcome and it's on like purples and stuff. But it's a Halloween one from the Dollar Tree. I'm looking forward to not so much Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was never a big holiday. Um, once I was out on my own, Thanksgiving was never really a big thing. But I'm definitely looking forward to Christmas and New Year's Eve. Um, there's just... Um, kind of like hope for my future, you know, even though there's no such thing as a future, there's only now. So when I talk about the spring, summer, fall, winter, that I'm never going to have another spring in my life, meaning physically, my physical body is not going to go through the spring season, the summer season, or the autumn season again. I'm in the winter season of my life, so that's it. You know, I'm in my 66th year, I have, I don't know how, I don't know how much time I have left, but I'm doing my best, even with my anxiety. And I'll tell you what, um, I've had some days where my anxiety is like, whew. uh, last night, my left arm went numb. It went numb, like in a way, like I hit a nerve is what it felt like, even though I didn't. It was just like instant. My arm from like here down just went numb. I'm like, that's not good. But I had no pain. My heart rate was normal. My blood pressure was normal. My oxygen was normal. And it almost felt as though I pinched a nerve. So it took about 10 minutes for the numbness to go away. But then my arm felt a little heavy. And I'm like, okay, what the heck did I, what did I do? I still haven't figured it out. But I do have a lot of um, pain or ache in my right leg in the area uh, below my hip, which my um, previous doctor, who's now retired, said is bursitis, and the pain will go down my leg to, excuse me, to my ankle. And not bad manners, just good coffee. Remember that one. Not bad manners, just good coffee. I have that swallowing issue because of my anxiety. Um, so sitting meditation, because of this pain I have on my side, I can't sit down on my Zafu, like on the floor anymore, half lotus or full lotus. So 
I have these crates. I'll show you. These crates here. Okay, I've got a bunch of them. And I have an extra one that I took out into the living room and I put my Zaku on the crate. And it's just a perfect height where I can still sit in meditation comfortably and actually meditate. Because with all that pain, I was having monkey mind so bad I wasn't able to get into a deep meditation. So, got that problem solved. My man friend and I meditate together. We take walks. He walks every day. I walk pretty much every day, but not necessarily as early as he does. Like he walks super early. He walks at like 6.30, quarter of seven, um, as soon as it gets light out. Yesterday I walked with him at 7 a.m. <laughs> Hadn't brushed my teeth, didn't have my tea, but got up, got dressed, walked with him, and we walked the lake, and I was like, that's a little too early for me. <laughs> so I do my walking a little later in the day and um, seasonal allergy stuff going on with me. This year has been terrible for seasonal allergies for me. I don't know what it is, but this year it's been sneezing and coughing and sneezing and coughing and it's awful. So sometimes I cry. I miss Sky for a minute and I cry. Sometimes I cry just out of confusion. Like, am I doing the right thing? Is Am I making the right decision? Am I making the right choices? Um, and I'm just trying to find my place in my life with a new person. And, um, and then just with doing things with him that are out of my comfort zone. And one of my friends said that very eloquently. It's you're doing things out of your comfort zone. And uh, I did get to meet his sister and brother-in-law delightful people, like really sweet people. Um, and that was a few weeks back. Um, but boy, it wiped me out emotionally. Like the next day, I couldn't do anything. I was so emotionally wiped out. So this afternoon, we're going to where he takes art lessons. He's an oil painter, artist, and um, and he's really good. And we're going to go over to the studio, and I'm going to meet his art teacher and um, look at the at this, just go around the studio. I am nervous about it, but I'm waiting to take my afternoon pill until just before we go. There's other things coming up that I'm going to need to do um, because he has kids and he has grandkids and <laughs> there's things I'm going to need to do. And um, that's nerve wracking for me because my comfort zone is being in my apartment on my own, you know but I don't want to be on my own forever. So I'm trying to push through and I'm hoping at some point, um, I'm thinking about either volunteering somewhere or what I'd really love to do is um, guest speaking somewhere, either on the topic of being a widow or being um going through the drug addiction that my son went through and what that felt like as a mom and his subsequent incarceration in state prison and what, you know, how I managed that or I don't know. I mean, gosh, I worked in the hospital. I was a CNA or just my anxiety and panic and how I maneuver the waters there. But I would love to do small group public speaking. Um, and and or, and find part-time work. Not anymore this year, but maybe in the spring, um, something where I could be maybe a companion caregiver or something very part-time in a small store, like a small Dollar Tree store or something like that to help push through the anxiety. Um, and so there's some of the things that I'm rolling around in my head, but everything else is okay enough. You know, I feel, aside from the pain in my leg, um, which comes and goes, um, I'm walking every day, taking a walk, I'm meditating, I'm drinking tons of water. And for the most part, you know, I feel pretty good. The, the tears come, the tears go, I miss Sky. 
Um, I do everything in my power to keep his memory going. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday again, so I'll put a message over on his obit page like I do every week. Um, he was so instrumental in teaching me so much about life and death. And um, one of the Ram Dass um, talks that we listened to last night was about um, um, why do people get so worked up about death when we all know it's going to happen? And he just said it so easily. Like, why do we get so worked up? Like, birth, life, death. Like, we all know it's going to happen. None of us none of us gets out of it. Like, no one's the exception, you know. We're all going to die. You're going to die. You're going to, this is what he's saying. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. So why do we get so, why are we so shocked when it happens? Why do we get so worked up when it happens? What's the matter with us that, you know, that we're crying and carrying on? And when you look at it like, when you look at it like that, it just, it seems so easy, right? But the problem with us as humans is we, we attach, you know, to our pets, to our kids, to our loved ones, our parents, our spouses, our friends. But we learn to do that. We do that. Like, I think as a people, we need each other, right? And I know a lot of us like to be alone and live alone and, and you're okay with that. And I like my alone time. It's important, but not always. I want somebody to have my back. I don't want somebody to pay my bills. Like somebody doesn't have to pay my bills. My bills are paid. I'm doing that on my own. Um, I'm not being bankrolled here in this relationship. So like know that. Like nobody's bankrolling me, you know? I'm taking care of myself, myself. Um, I'm not in a position in this relationship. What's this business? I'm not in a position in this relationship at this stage where we're talking, you know, income thing. I mean, we're talking money things like that's, there's a lot of conversations going on because we're older, because we're seniors, because he will turn 69 in a few months, which then puts him right into his 70th rotation, his seven, seventh decade on this big ball. So when you get to that age, you have to talk about everything. We're not 20, right? We're not 20. So we have to talk about everything. And what direction are we heading in this relationship? Because nobody wants to be wasting time. Like, I'm not, I don't want to be wasting time in this relationship. Like, there needs to be something going on here where there's a connection. Or I don't want to be wasting my time. If, if there's not a connection, move on. You know what I mean? And that's just how I feel about it. But there is a connection. It's it's super strong. It's not um, imagined or put on or anything. And being the age I am, I'm and and all the relationships I've been in, I know what I want and I know what I don't want. I know what I'll accept and I know what I won't. I know where to set boundaries across the board. All that is just that simple. And life doesn't have to be so complicated. We don't have to make it so complicated. And I can tell you right now, I'm juggling emotion stuff, right? One, I'm on disability for anxiety and panic. That's a medical condition that has me on disability. Okay, so keeping that in mind, um, I lost my partner of 13 and a half years. He moved on through death into rebirth, right? Okay, so I'm dealing with all that stuff, right? There's all kinds of emotion there. There's um, crying and, and you know, loss and, and good memories and sad memories. And so you got all that going on. And then I've got this new man that came into my life. We're in our seventh, sixth week. This will be this week coming in is six, six weeks since we've been seeing each other, which is like, you know, brand new, brand new stuff, all that. Um, and uh, so I'm maneuvering all of those emotions and everything that comes with that and a whole lot of talk and communication. And then my son being here and then not being here, you know, and is he okay? And like, what's going on? And all the emotions there, you know, 
you know, did I do everything for him that I could? Yes, a thousand times over. Did I do everything for Sky? Yes, a thousand times over. So I have all these emotional parts and pieces that I'm working with all the time. And, you know, my channel and what do I put out there that I can, I have enough privacy, um, especially as this is so new, this relationship is so new. Um, I'm watching a lot of people going through what I'm going through. So I'm kind of taking cues from people um, on YouTube, other people on YouTube. And um, I'm learning as I go. But I'm juggling a lot of emotional balls, you know. And I'm trying to figure them all out one at a time. And I know, you know, I'm recognizing what's in my control and what's out of my control. And, um, and I just, I just go day by day. The other morning, um, Saturday morning, uh, we went to, he and I went to a local coffee shop and we met my old, old, made, met up with my old, 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 old friend. Cause I wanted him, my new guy to meet my old, old, old friend because my old, old, old friend, you know, he wants to make sure I'm okay. He wants to make sure I'm safe. He wants to make sure that this is okay. So I wanted them to meet. And we were there for like an hour and a half and talked like about everything. They got along so well. And I knew that they would. So my old friend texted me and he's like, yeah, you, you got a good guy there. You know, he's, this is okay. Like I feel so much better after meeting him. And so he still has to meet my old friend. And because I want that, you know, I'll be meeting his, he's got two daughters that are local. And so at some point I'll meet them. He's got a couple grandkids. I'll meet them. He's got two kids that are out of state. That will be, you know, way down the road. And my kids, he will meet my oldest daughter. My life coach daughter will do a FaceTime sometime, hopefully in the next week or so. And so um, he'll meet her and he's already met Kenny. So, so there's a lot of meeting, you know, 27 minutes. You have that too going on that how does everybody mesh, you know, but anyway, that's where I am. I'm okay enough. Um, a lot of emotion. I can't tell you how much emotion. And when I hear of other people that are going through things and you just can't change it, like I know people in, in, in you know, like that I actually talk to every day that are going through so much um, that they can't, can't change. And then you, you know, you go on YouTube and you watch people like Kyle Appleford or you watch Tiffany from Tiffany Thinks. And it's like, man, they, why, you know, why is Tiffany going through another whole battle? Like there's so many different people like that, that, um, you just wonder why that happens and there's nothing that they can do to change up what's going on in their life. So you just have to go day by day, take as much from life as you can and just keep pushing forward because that's just what life is. And um, listening to Ram Dass say about, I don't know why we get so so worked up over somebody dying. Like, why is that a shock? It's the, um, it was explained as when someone dies, what has died is our dream, our future, our plans, our foundation. Our foundation has shifted and changed and moved because we, we had this, plan we had this and then it's different and so everything that you figure you know the vacations the holidays the the having lunch the next day whatever is gone and if you're watching Lori Conway from Crazy Busy Mama there's a perfect example of you know falling apart but trying to hold it all together when she lost her husband Quentin back in April um that sudden the foundation and then you know 
Um, and it's, it's, there's nothing easy about it. Uh, I watched Sky get sick and sicker and sicker and then pass on. I couldn't change a dang thing about that. All I could do was love on him and make him comfortable. And that was all I could do. So here I am now is pushing forward, doing the best I can do. So I'm going to go. I have a art studio to go see, I guess. So I'll talk to everybody soon and let me know how you're doing. I'll be over on Messenger this afternoon. I'll catch up with everybody over there. Again, if you see me disappearing on Facebook, it's nothing personal to anybody. Anybody. I'm just pulling myself away from Facebook until it's just going to be my profile picture and my background picture, but nothing else. Um, because everybody that I consider a friend is, is over on Messenger and I can actually talk with you guys over there. You know, Facebook, we just swap spit, so to speak. We're just swapping quotes and things. So I love you. Take care. Inch by inch. I'll talk to you soon.